I got a job at a funeral home. Cosmetology school didn't work out. Neither did living in a big city. I moved back home to my hometown. Buildings boarded up everywhere. Yup, I'm home. I got a job at the only place hiring. A funeral home. Mr. Morgan runs me through the business. I'll be doing secretary work. Some janitorial. But the real reason he's hired me? He's no good at makeup. Mr. Morgan finishes an embalming and tells me, the fastest way to learn is to jump right in. He leaves me alone with the corpse. It's the first dead body I've ever seen. I shake off the eeriness and apply the makeup just like I would on anyone. I give them a natural look. Just as I finish the last touch of blush, the body's eyes open wide. Ah! My chest! Help! I scream and run to get Mr. Morgan. Tell him this person's still alive. But when we come back in, they're dead again. It's all right to be scared the first time, he reassures me. But I know what I saw. When I apply the makeup on a second body, the same thing happens. They come alive again. This one begs for its life. Please don't kill me! It's grotesque. I can hear the fear in their voice. Ten seconds, then it's over. No one will believe me. And I need this job, so I keep at it. Some days go by. I learned Mr. Morgan had a wife who died a year ago and no children. The third body screams too. What are you doing in my house? No, don't! The fourth body yells. You gonna shoot me? What's in that bottle? Four bodies in eight days. This town isn't big enough to have so many people dying. I began to worry there's a serial killer out there. No news. Not a lot of police. I go into Mr. Morgan's office and ask him, Is it always this busy? Sometimes we're empty for a month. Sometimes they come in spurts. You don't think this many is suspicious? He sighs, closes the office door, and tells me to sit down. So, they've been talking to you. What? He takes out a gun and points it at me. The bodies. How long did they talk? Ah, uh, only a few seconds. I need to figure out how to make it last longer. Forever. So I can get my wife back. To do that, I need to experiment with more bodies. Can't have you stopping me. He takes a bottle of liquid and sprays it heavily in my face and mouth. Cyanide, he says. I try to get up and run, but I can't breathe. I have to focus. I only have ten seconds. I pray he hires someone else to do the makeup. Everything goes black. Then the light comes back. I'm dead, on the table, and see the new cosmetologist. Mr. Morgan's a serial killer! Go to the police! Rocky is the sweetest little angel. At the shelter, he didn't even bark once. Just smiled at me. Driving home, I texted my husband. On our way home. Not sold on the name Rocky. I was thinking Sergeant Bark. Babe. What? For the name. Babe. Because he's a pig, get it? I entered our home, ready to scold my husband for suggesting such a mean name. But he wasn't home. Where are you? I messaged him. Work. Almost done. I thought the office was closed on Sundays. Catching up on paperwork. We'll be home soon. Another reason I wanted a dog. My husband has been working all the time lately. Odd hours. Sometimes late at night. I gave Rocky a tour of our home. I showed him his kennel and the toys I bought him. I could see the happiness in his eyes. When my husband got home, I excitedly brought our new dog to show him. Rocky became agitated. He barked loudly at my husband and tried to dig his paws into my husband's legs. I restrained Rocky. He's never acted like this, I swear. Honey, I just went to the dispensary. There's weed in my pocket. Oh, he thinks he's solving a crime. This isn't going to work. What do you mean? We can't have him barking his head off every time I want to smoke a little weed. I'll put him in the backyard. I led Rocky to the back door and let him out. Honey, I know you want a dog, but 
Maybe not a retired police dog. How about tomorrow we bring him back to the shelter before he gets too attached and get a puppy? But he's so perfect. I won't have a dog barking at me every time I want to smoke, okay? That's final. Tomorrow we'll pick a different dog. My husband stormed up the stairs. I held back tears. I loved Rocky so much, but I couldn't cross my husband. He had a horrible temper. I called the shelter to tell them the bad news. We're going to need to pick out another dog. We just can't have a retired drug-sniffing dog. Rocky wasn't a drug-sniffing dog. You told me he was a police dog. Rocky was a cadaver dog. I looked outside and saw Rocky digging furiously and barking. The worst part about being a doomsday prepper was the crickets. When the weather was right, my father would take me out to a field just outside of town, and we'd walk around until we found a nice dead log. He'd roll the log over and snatch as many critters as he could. When the world's ending, you won't have the luxury of McDonald's. You're gonna have to eat whatever you can find. Then he'd put the bugs in my hand and say, Show me you're a survivor. He refused to take me home until every bug was eaten. Looking back at it all, I guess the craziest part about it was that I actually believed my dad. He'd say, Any day now, Matty. Any freaking day. When the nukes go off, it's game over. When it's kill or be killed, only the prepared will survive. I was just a kid. I didn't know any better. My father pulled me out of school in kindergarten so he could homeschool me. I was never around any kids. My father taught me that friends were just people who would be harder to kill in the apocalypse. I had nobody around me to tell me that my father was crazy. I didn't figure that out until I was practically a full-grown man. As I got older, and the world didn't end, my father and I grew apart. I moved on with my life and found a sense of normalcy I'd never known. My father stayed convinced the world was going to end. I couldn't convince him otherwise, no matter how many times I tried. He endlessly practiced survival drills and target practice for decades until he was an old man. Dementia runs in the family, and I had to put my father in a nursing home. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Not because I loved him or anything. It was hard because he refused to leave his doomsday supplies behind. The only way I was able to convince him was by pointing out that the nursing home had a pharmacy in the building, and if the world ended, he could raid their supply of pharmaceuticals. In the nursing home, my father started having doubts. He was close to death now, and the world hadn't ended yet. He started to realize that he wasted his whole life. The man had ruined my childhood, but I couldn't help but feel sorry for him. Every time I visited, it looked like all the joy had been sucked right out of him. So one night, while visiting him, I made a stupid decision and lied to my father. Dad, I said, it just happened. What happened? A nuke just hit New York City. My father's eyes lit up, and he simply said, Finally. I thought I was giving him closure before he died. Then my father walked over to his closet and pulled out a pistol he had hidden. Let the killing begin.